a good evening to you. I'm Dr. Matt. Good to see you. Now, I think uh, annual physical examinations are something that I don't really think gets as much attention as it deserves. Now, while they are not an exhaustive checklist of uh, ailments and potential issues, they do give us a nice general overview. Uh, think of it as a, a service for the body, a yearly service where we get to pop the hood or pop the bonnet if you're from the UK and make sure everything's functioning as it should. Predominantly speaking, we focus on the nerves and the senses during physical examination. But we also uh, do some memory association, memory testing. Very light, some of it, again, quite lighthearted. Nothing to, to worry about, nothing to feel anxious over. Okay? Again, I am... Dr. Matt, and before we go any further, I would just like to assure you that everything in our surgery and clinic is entirely sterilized, um, and the level of care we offer, we hope to provide um, an executive service to our patients and to our clients. So let's uh, let's get started with something fairly rudimentary, fairly straightforward. Okay, just like to listen to your heart. It's a nice sound. Now, if you could just. strong and regular. Have you had any issues or uh, any history uh, from yourself or even uh, in the family of heart disease? Okay. Okay. The heart um, has a habit of being one of the first organs to present with signs uh, that you're suffering from stress. And, and your blood levels, obviously, uh, will change a little bit. But our heart responds to the mind just as, it, and just as much as it does the physical. So if you are finding yourself in relatively stressful situations, or if you're in a stressful job, perhaps you're studying. We want to make sure the heart um, is looked after. We're keeping an eye on it, um, which is why physical examinations are essential for overall healthcare. Again, it's uh, if it's something that we are concerned about, we can run a simple EKG basically monitors the level at which your heart um, is pumping blood and EKGs essentially focus on irregularities to the heartbeat. Thankfully your heart sounds strong and healthy. Okay, so that's good. Now I think next 
we'll have a very quick listen to the lungs. Um, again, just as you're inflating, drawing oxygen in. lungs again sound clear um, quite often uh, this time of year and uh, the circumstances we find ourselves in uh, lungs and uh, respiratory concerns are of the utmost to us so again all clear there heart lungs healthy how are you feeling uh, generally? If somebody was to ask you on a scale of uh, 1 to 12 million, 1 being um, this is the worst you've ever felt, and 12 million being I feel like Dr. Matt, who hangs around roughly at 11 to 12 million. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Sometimes, I, if you'd answered two or three, I would still be saying, good, good. Because the good is in response to the honesty. Because unless you're honest with yourself, nobody can really help you. Okay, so that's good. It's a good start. Thank you. Now, I think we'll have um, a look at the eyes. Um, before we test your pupil, the light sensitivity. I need to have a quick look. Um, this chart, actually. And maybe even before we get to that, it might be beneficial to you if I explain a little bit about the 12 cranial nerves and what each of the nerves are responsible for. You hear very often about these cranial nerve exams and I said they're usually part of a wider physical examination. But what are the these sense one of these nerves? Well you can see up here. Some of these may be less familiar to you. For example, the trochlear. The trochlear. Responsible for the movement of your eyes. Of course, your facial nerves, your face movement, and also taste. Face sensation and chewing. Now, I think people assume that these are largely the same nerves doing uh, all of these and performing all of these activities, but uh, it's a different set of nerves entirely. Sensation and a boom. 
and balance. Of course, in case you were curious, this is just the brain. Um, and it's nice to see graphically where these nerves sit in our brain and how easy they are to forget about sometimes because they're responsible for all of our sensations and what is life without sensation. performance of your eyes and then we'll have a proper examination and look for light sensitivity light reaction and see where we are okay what I'd like you to do you can see this board I'd like you to read the first two lines Straightforward for you. No issue. Good. We should be so bold as to move to line three for me, please. Good. Good. And line four, please. so far. Wonderful. Okay. Line five, please. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Very well done. Again, if these become a little bit blurry or become increasingly challenging, let me know, okay? Never guess with uh, testing of the eye. It doesn't benefit you, and it certainly doesn't benefit me or our optician who would love to sell you some glasses. Just kidding. Um, and please. Doing very well. Okay. A little bit more challenging. Okay. Um, I'm assuming you don't wear glasses. Okay. And when was the last time you had your eyes uh, officially tested? Okay. It's maybe something you might want to consider, but let's proceed on to line seven, if you can, please. Mm -hmm. Squinting a little bit. Okay. 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 Now, we'll proceed to, to the bottom um, of the chart, but again, as we reach the very end, or even the penultimate line, you might find it um, almost impossible if, if some of them are a little bit blurry for you, okay? So, let's continue. On to line eight, if you can, please. This, this line here.
that even in the alphabet? Just kidding. Okay. Okay, let's uh, breeze through these final lines. it there. Uh, your eyes generally are, are, are strong, but I would absolutely suggest a trip to, um, yeah, I think it, it makes sense. Um, opticians uh, are the specialists in the eyes, and you might find that one of your eyes um, is actually 20-20 or very close to it, and the other might be a little bit weaker. Okay, but I'm gonna have a quick look into the eyes. Let's make sure we don't have any uh, any stigma or contusion, any laziness. So what I'll be doing here is just using a quite a quite a, a bright flashlight, and I'll be looking for several things primarily for your ability to track a light. Um, track my finger, how the light reacts to um, light pollution, essentially, to a bright light stimuli. And um, let's start. Okay. bright. But what I would like you to do is just follow the light for me, okay? Follow the light for me. Very good. Very good. Just If you need to, to stop or take a break, to blink, please feel free to do so. Okay, good. Now I'd like you to look straight ahead for me, please. Don't look into the light, just look straight ahead. You can look at my nose if it helps you to focus on a point. Good. Let's go into large in the lens a little bit. Good. 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 Very good. Just keep looking straight. news is your eyes are responding to stimuli exactly as they should. We're seeing contraction um, as we should and your, f 
following a light fixture point with ease. I couldn't see any laziness, but I'd like to do a supplementary test if uh, it's okay by you. This time it's a very similar test, but without a light. Okay, and instead of the light, we'll have the point. Look at the point of my finger and follow it around a little bit. Just follow it around. Excellent. Good. Full range of movement in the eye. Excellent. Now, I need to cover one eye. Good. I'd like you to tell me when one of my fingers comes into view for you, okay? Good. 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 Excellent. Very good. Okay. The eyes seem to be um, performing well. Again, no issue tracing and following movement. Peripheral vision, strong. No issues. And of course, we wouldn't expect to see any, but it's reassuring nonetheless. Okay. Now, Next, I'd like to test your ability to track time. This is maybe something you're not used to, something that might feel a little alien to you. But our body, our brains, tend to have an internal clock. Human beings generally have a, a good sense of a period of time passing. And what I'd like you to do, I will start the timer on my watch, and I'd like you to tell me when you think it's been one minute. Now I encourage you not to count, because it defeats the test. So when I say start and then finish, it'll have been one minute, okay? But instead of me saying finish, I'd like you to say finish. I'll say start. Now, okay, I can tell you that was 46 seconds, you did very well. People on average tend to stop uh, 
between 55 and a minute 10. Tiny little bit below average, but maybe I misheard and you didn't actually ask me to stop, so we can put that one on me, okay? Okay, it's not a traditional test, but it's something that we like to incorporate because in, in rare and extreme cases, I've seen people call stop after 20 seconds really thinking it's been at least a minute which of course gives a little bit of, uh, of worry and usually cause uh, for a deeper investigation not so with you perfectly within parameters now next is something a little bit more traditional i'll be testing your so, a bit of a misdemeanor, the naming, uh, testing your reflexes. Uh, a reflex is a voluntary response. Our reflexes are the speed at which we respond to something. This is involuntary, and it's more really testing a little portion of your knee that, again, with a certain stimuli, the leg will kick out a little bit. Okay? Hold on. Excellent. Do the same to your elbow. Good. Good. And on the other side. Good. And regardless of uh, how it sounds, it shouldn't be painful. Excellent. Okay. Is there not accurately referred to are perfect. And the next thing I'd like you to do is just to close your eyes and I will be very softly speaking each of your ears. And I'd like you we close the eyes is because it allows us a greater level of focus. Focus. The word isn't focused. Okay. Propensity. Very good. And of course, the other reason for having your eyes closed, not that you ever would, but it's because some people might try to uh, lip read. And again, the purpose of these tests isn't to beat the test. It's to analyze uh, how well your body is functioning. Okay. Eyes closed. Starling is one. Starling is one. Very well done. If you've been living under a rock, you may not have heard of this ASMR creator, but she is uh, absolutely excellent. Almost nobody understands the ASMR reference. So when I do meet uh, a fellow ASMR viewer, it's always nice. Let's close. Excellent. Well done. Very well done. Make this into its own little game, but the purpose is to test the hearing. Now this time I'll be a little bit further away from your ear. Let's close them. Very 
Good. Very good. Very well done. You're hearing, um, despite if you're spending a lot of time with headphones on, you seem to be uh, very sensitive and interpreting words extraordinarily well. So congratulations. Um, okay. Next test I'd like to deal with you. I'd like to have a quick look in the ears first, actually. Sit still, please. side. ears look clean, no blockages, no contusions, um, earwax is a little bit more pronounced in this ear, but nothing uh, in the realms of uh, anything to be alarmed about, okay, good, okay, now the next test is is um, something a little bit different actually. Can you read this for me, please? Excellent. Excellent. That isn't the test. <laughs> okay. Now what I'm going to do here I'm going to write or draw something on the screen. Then I'll proceed with a different test. And then I'd like you to remember what it is that you saw. Okay. Okay. For the next test. This will seem a little bit intimidating and a little bit terrifying, but I assure you, you're in very safe hands. What I would like to do is have you hold your hand out like this, and I'll be holding the flame way beneath your hand, and you tell me when you can start to feel the heat, okay? Like this. Just hold your hand over, please. There. Good. With your hand, please. Here. Very good. Very good. Now, if you could turn your hand over, please. when you feel the heat, no matter how sensitive or how light the sensation is. There. Okay. 
around, palm up. Mm. There, okay. A little bit less sensitivity here on that side, but nothing, um, nothing that I should call for concern. Um, our motor nerves uh, from our brain are basically flying down to your hand, the neural epidermis, and the, the nerves that sit beneath your skin, and telling you, okay, we feel heat here, and then racing back up the arm to the brain. Actually, they go to the arm, to the spine, and then up. But it's important that we can identify um, a lack of sensitivity, um, especially to heat, because it's particularly dangerous. But one case, uh, we had an individual who had um, developed a condition where they were unable to feel pain. And usually, um, we are born with, with, with a defect such as that, but this was developed after, um, after a separate condition that they had, um, and it was a very slow process, and they didn't identify it. Um, thankfully, the test did, because we feel pain protect us, to keep us safe, um, to keep us operating in the confines of uh, security. So, fear not, you can feel the heat. <laughs> okay, now, hopefully I distracted you long enough. Could you remind me of the word that you saw on the surface? Very good, very good. It was in fact a tree. If you can read my writing, then that is a test in itself. Now, I'd like to do a couple more, okay? And again, forgive me for my inability to write. you think that I've drawn. It's not a mushroom cloud. That is a tree. But either way, your brain is interpreting the shape with the correct object or item. This is really just a test again to make sure that your brain is operating um, as we'd expect. The association of the image, whether or not you thought it was a tree or a mushroom cloud, um, it doesn't matter because both objects have a similar pattern and outline and it's about the brain associating that pattern with the correct word but fear not you passed okay I'm going to pick um, two words at random and I asking you what these two words were in an unknown period of time. Please don't worry if you forget. Nothing to worry about. First word. Shoe. Shoe. Second word. Oh, 
All right. Now, very quickly, I'd like to test your sense of smell. And we do this, and I quite like our approach to this. There are three solutions that we'll spray into the air. I just want you to give a little sniff and tell me what you think it is. Okay. Before we proceed, I just need to check if you have any allergies. In case we were to spray sesame and you were GBASMR, um, we would have a problem for sure. Push your eyes a little bit. Strawberry. Excellent. Second one. Orange. Very well done. Cynics would say I'm using the same bottle three times, but obviously they're mistaken because it's three different flavors. What did that smell like? A little bit harder to discern. Of course, it was lavender. As we're moving towards the end of the test, I like to sneak in just a little bit of lavender because it just helps set the tone for getting to sleep. Excellent. Okay, we don't have much left. What I would like for you to do is to remind me of those two words. Okay. Your eyes, hearing, sense of smell, um, reflexes, brain cognitive function, everything looks spectacular. I'd like to just to finish on diet. And, uh, I know it's never fun, but exercise. What does your weekly schedule usually look like? It's challenging. It is. It's, it's definitely challenging. Now, I personally, I try to exercise, but even more important than exercise uh, is diet. And what I found that works for me, and everybody's different, but I find I always need something to look forward to. I'm one of these people that uh, that really gleans a lot of happiness from food. Not a disorder. I don't. It's not a an answer to a day of sadness. But it's something I take great pleasure from. And I think denying yourself of all pleasure uh, from food is difficult and probably unsustainable so again me personally i have a, a meal plan that um, i stick to on the work days so from either monday to friday or if you're in the middle east in dubai perhaps uh, you'd work sunday to thursday and you eat healthily within those parameters and then at the weekends or your days off you eat whatever you want and you can look forward to that if you're trying to stick to a rigid and regimental seven day a week diet chances are it will be a diet and if you go on a diet you'll come off the diet all right we want something that's sustainable okay 
have a think about it and be kind to yourself. What I would also recommend taking some supplements if you're not eating as much vegetables and fruit as you probably should. Something like zinc. Um, maybe something along the lines of um, depending on, on again you, your diet really um, vitamin K2 promotes healthiness to your nervous system if you are going to take K2 um, usually pairs well with vitamin D vitamin D of course uh, responsible for seemingly everything healthy skin and naturalness to us um, and of course vitamin C um, and vitamin C has been identified as being responsible for a whole host of uh, health benefits and a lot of it combined healthy digestion your respiratory again your, your epidermis skin reacts very well to, to having uh, ample access to supplements um, even the way we repair and process information if you want to kind of really kick the boat out you could be taking um, kind of essential uh, like cod liver oil for example it can be very good for bones structure uh, even omega-3 it's associated very closely to the brain but of course it really depends on um, your appetite and of course your budget when everyone has access to fresh fruit and fresh vegetables um, but try and do what you can Invest in your body. Invest in you. We all want to live forever. Okay. And as your physician, I'm going to help you try and accomplish some of that at least. And attending a physical examination is a great start in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. I'm happy to report that um, no abnormalities. You look the picture of health. I have said that. I've seen myself saying that to people with broken legs, broken arms. Um, because they'll heal. And even if what you're suffering from can't heal, you can be the picture of health. Because you're happy. Alright. Thank you very much for coming in today. And um, I know some people physical examinations tedious others find them quite relaxing and the thing is unless you're looking out for yourself it's very difficult to expect other people to look out for you so well done on caring for you these things aren't important I expect to see you here in a year's time if you have any issues, please do give us a call. Try and uh, give the, the food you're eating a second thought. Indulge at the weekends, go wild, enjoy yourself. That's what life's about. I'm not a counselor or a psychologist, just a gentleman who wants you to be as happy as you deserve to be. Which is extremely happy, by the way. <laughs> okay. Do you have any other concerns or queries? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you if you suffer from from hay fever or uh, allergies in general, there are numerous um, ailments and antihistamines that, that we can prescribe but what I would recommend doing is um, having uh, an allergy analysis done you can go back and see it at any time and we'll run what's called a patch test where we essentially drop very small uh, amounts of common um, 
food types and foodstuffs and uh, even fabrics to see if the skin has a reaction to it that usually lends itself to um, an allergy or something a little bit deeper than that. So if you are suffering from allergies, then please uh, book an appointment and uh, we can absolutely, we can assist, of course. The thing is, a lot of people are allergic to at least something and the vast majority of us live our life without realizing it. And we can be eating foods that are causing us issues, but we've never known about it because we thought, oh, I'm just having an off day. Stomach's a little bit upset. And I, I used GB, and GB is our absolute queen of ASMR. Um, she's allergic to sesame, um, and I think her allergy is actually quite serious. But even if it's a mild allergy, we, we don't want to be putting this into our body, regardless of what it is, if our body has a reaction to dealing with it. Okay, so I would, I would consider consider scheduling an allergy analysis make sure there's, there's not something in your daily diet that is actually um, causing irritation if you feel bloated or even lethargy in, in some cases excellent coming in today and it's really lovely to see you. I love my job. I love being able to spend time with uh, patients who uh, have a, an understanding and um, an appreciation for, for what we're trying to do, which is help 